Welcome back to this ENCA Moneyline special report on our captains of industry. Our guest today is Ketzel Gordon. What's wrong then? Is it that the vested interests in the public sector are a lot more powerful? I mean, I think, I think the, the reality in South Africa is that we don't have the most important thing that, that a country in our position needs, which is a visionary leader. You, know, you need somebody who can mobilize and inspire everybody to want to get you know, off the couch and go and do something. And unfortunately, we don't have that in South Africa. The second thing is that I think we have failed to be brave in pursuing a single, more consistent economic policy. So we keep sort of you know, going to the right, going to the left, moving back to the right. And even in the cabinet or in, in, in the government structures, you have both sides almost equally represented. Mm. You know, uh, in the previous administration in which I worked, I could see that the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Planning were on the right. Rob Davies and the Minister for Economic Development were on the left. Yeah. And to try and assume that you had a consistent economic policy and an economic strategy for the country, you know, was just not meaningful. So it's difficult to pull, to pull everybody yeah, together. I think, I, I think that if we had a consistent uh, policy and a visionary leader, uh, I think we have a huge amount of skill and capacity and willingness. I've, I've not met too many people who say, I don't want to do my little bit to make this country a better place. I haven't met anybody. So everybody wants to do something. But creating the, the environment in which everybody can make their little difference doesn't exist. What happened at PPC? I mean, at PPC, the, the issue was a very uh, principled issue for me. I had, a, I, had a stand, I had a difficulty with the board. They would not support my decision to fire a senior executive and who was undermining the business and undermining me pretty much on a daily basis. And I gave them you know, compelling reasons to do that. And I think I reached the point where I realized it's difficult to be the CEO in a business where your board is not supporting you and one of your key executives that you need the support of is not supporting you. And so I left and went directly to shareholders and I've appealed to shareholders to take control of the business. What about the allegations of the office and the parking and yeah. all of that? Are you a prima donna? No, def definitely not a prima donna. Those issues are being put out of context. So let me just use the one example, which I think is quite a, an important one. We were trying to narrow the salary gap between the highest and the lowest. Yeah. Now, the highest is clearly me, and I cut my salary by a million rands. And then I asked the rest of the executive to either give up half or all of the increase, not their salary, okay. just that increase. So you either give up all of the increase or part of the increase. And the executive that I wanted to let go gave up nothing. And if you are a very senior person in the organization and you can't support an initiative like that, it shows two things. One is you are not a leader. And two is you don't share the vision of the person who is leading the organization. The office story is a similar concept. We were moving to a new building. Half the people were going to leave behind their own private offices and move into an open plan space. And so I asked the senior executives, I said, all of you, I know you need offices, but can we make them small? And this particular executive has a massive office, which basically says, I'm more important, and you, know, you don't matter. So what the board doesn't understand is that if you are trying to build an organization that's based on values and a particular culture and a shared vision, then a senior person not playing along with that vision is not part of the team. So I think, I think trying to make it out like it's not so important mm. is in fact a reflection that the board doesn't understand or appreciate how important it is to create an organization that has a shared value system. In your, in your view, um, a lot of people are saying that what's happened in the PPC case um, puts a stark light on the relationships between boards and executives and that we really need to start interrogating this um, in South Africa. What do you think the issues are? I think the issues are very different in each case. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what's going on both in the public and the private sector at the moment and I think each case has its nuances. But the bottom line would be the same, which is shareholders need to appoint a board that has the necessary skills 
the necessary maturity and the ability to manage what should be a very strong and independently minded management team. Now the problem we see in the public sector very, very often is that the independently minded senior management are not allowed to manage. And one of my concerns and the reason I raise as a matter of principle in, in PPC uh, the issues around the board is that we were beginning to see that public sector type behavior creep into the private sector. Management has the right to manage. I had the authority to fire the person I wanted to fire. You know, if I'm not delivering on what I promised the shareholders, then you can fire me. But to stop me doing my job, I think, is inappropriate. And we see a lot of that in the public sector. You know, between ministers and DGs, between boards and CEOs. If you look at the SABC today or the SAA story today, you know, it smacks of all of these yeah. things. So get a strong board, get a strong CEO, and let them both do their jobs. Yeah. And not try and interfere in each other's jobs. 2014 South Africa, is this what you fought for? No, this is definitely not what we fought for. Uh, we, we fought because we wanted a country in which we would have abundant growth, where there will be a more equal distribution of those resources, where there would be stronger social services and networks uh, for people to, to be able to extract value from. And I think we've failed on many, many of the things. There are some pass marks. You know, we've done well in ensuring that there's been a successful political transformation. We've done well in providing uh, an increased number of people with access to services. But, you know, saying that there are more people going to school today than did in 1994 is one half of the story. If we could say more people are going and they are getting a better education, mm. that would have been perfect. That we have more hospitals and clinics available to people today is factually correct. But to say that we had a higher life expectancy would have been a better story today. You know, so, you know, that we have a situation where the Gini coefficient which describes income inequality is roughly where it yeah. was 20 years ago. That the bottom 40% of South Africans, including the social grants given by government, earn only 7% of the disposable income. Wow. You know, for me, that, that's not what we fought for. And what we've produced over the last 20 years, if we wanted to be fair, has been mediocre. And, you know, I think many people will agree with that description. Some good, some bad. So we are sort of in the middle. We had a 2 or 3% growth story rather than a, that, than a 5 to 6% growth story. We have the capacity to be a 5 to 6% growth story. How do we get there? Like I said, get a visionary leadership that can mobilize and, and enthuse people into doing things and then agree on a consistent framework. You know, even if it's a little bit wrong, even if the framework is a little bit wrong, but you apply it consistently for long enough, it is better than trying to do something inconsistent all the time. And keep changing yeah. um, policies yeah. midterm or every five years. I mean, years the, poli so. the policy analysis will show you across the world yeah. that even if you get it a little bit wrong, but you apply it for a long enough time, it produces better outcomes. And that's it for this special report of ENCA Moneyline. Thank you so much for watching. From me, Sikim Gabadeli and the team, goodbye.